Welcome to Let's Talk Socials, the social media podcast that helps you to spice up your socials. I'm your host Hannah, the social media manager and coach, and I bring you the latest social media trends as well as tips and tricks on how to leverage social media for your business every Wednesday. Now, let's talk socials. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Socials. Now, before we get started, I have to tell you something. I am so excited because I got my first ever review on my podcast. How cool is that? I mean, so far I've only received a few five-star ratings, which, don't get me wrong, I'm also so grateful for. So thanks to everyone who rated my podcast. Keep the ratings coming. (laughs) I love to see them. But this one got me really, really excited because, you know, it's my first review. So (laughs) thanks to Steph. Shout out for you at this stage. You're fabulous. Thanks for everyone who's supporting me in my podcasting journey. You don't know how grateful I am for your support. But now let's stop this emotional talk and get on with this episode. Today I want to talk about the things that I would do if I had zero followers and if I were starting out on Instagram as a service-based business. The things that I would do and maybe also some things that I would not do. The first thing that I always recommend is to get really clear on who you want to target. Now this is not only important for your social media but also for your business in general. If you don't know who you're targeting then How do you know what content you have to make? How do you know which branding to use? How do you know what topics to talk about? So, you know, if you don't know what your ideal client needs to hear, what they are struggling with, who they are, what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy, then, well, you don't know a lot of things. So it's really, really important to to get that sorted out and to know who your ideal client is. How do you do that? I do that every three or four months. I set up a survey, I ask some questions, I send it to some people. It's really easy to get answers nowadays for surveys. You can post them in Facebook groups, you can ask your Instagram audience, you can send them to people you know are in that niche. It's not that hard anymore. So Really try to get a good idea of what these people are struggling with, how you can help, what their goals are, etc. So, and once you have these answers, it's going to be so much easier to get answers to a lot of questions that will arise along the way. For example, if you're thinking, hmm, should I be posting more stories or should I post more feed posts or maybe even reels? Well, the answer is very simple. What does your audience like to consume and what do they need to hear from you? In which format do they need to hear it? So it's really easy. You're going to get a lot of answers to your questions if you know who your ideal client is. Something that you can also do when it comes to your ideal client is to set up an ideal buyer persona. Sometimes we also say an ideal buyer avatar or an ideal avatar, client avatar. There are a lot of different names, but you get what I mean. And a client avatar is basically your ideal client as a person. So for example, you could say, okay, my ideal client is called Lucy and she is 25 years old. She is a service provider in the creative niche and she is struggling with getting more clients from Instagram. Then I could think of the struggles that she has, the goals that she has, and you just kind of come up with that one person that you think of when you create content or when you make creative decisions in your business. And that can really help to answer these questions. Another thing that I did when I started my page was I started building a community right away. And I don't necessarily mean followers that then turn into clients, but it's more about finding like-minded people who can support you and who you can support as well. So find people in the same niche because they are going to know what you're talking about. They understand your posts. They might find it more interesting than others. And they will very likely also engage back. Try to find these people. And, you know, if I think back of the times when I had, you know, like 50 followers or so, all of these people were people in the same niche. They were mostly also social media managers. You know, it really helped me to figure out the niche as well, to see what others are doing 
I'm not saying you should copy people, but it's just really good to get inspired by others and to see how they are making things work. So it's really cool to have this kind of support going on. And if I'm honest, I'm still following some of these people and I think they are also following me. So shout out to you if you're sticking around <laughs> after all this time still and if you've been one of my early Instagram friends. <laughs> it has been really great and it's going to give you a lot of support, not just in the form of engagement, but also mental support. Because it's not really fun to build an Instagram community all by yourself. It's really not. Another thing that goes along these lines is that, well, people are not just going to find you out of nowhere. You're going to have to engage yourself, especially if you're just starting out. It might be a bit more time consuming, yes, of course, but you really need to be doing that. You need to get in touch with people, send them DMs, you know, comment under their posts in a meaningful way, obviously, but get yourself out there and make a lot of contacts. Now, huge Instagram accounts are probably not gonna recommend these tactics because they are not using it themselves because, you know, they have thousands of followers and it would be way too time consuming for them to comment and, you know, engage themselves. But it's something that is really important. Also, they don't use hashtags because their content gets seen anyways, but you should do that. And that's why I'm here recording this episode because you might be seeing these huge Instagram ex and you're like, oh, but this person is not using hashtags. Okay, then it, it's probably not that important. Well, not for them, but it might be for you. So another reminder at this point, don't always take all the tips that you get on social media and think they are applicable to you. They might not be. Um, not every single tip on social media is applicable to your business. So always see where that tip fits into your total strategy and if it matches your goals. Another thing that I found also really Really important is to get my branding right. What I did in the beginning is I just chose a few brand colors that I thought would represent my business that I liked. It's one of my favorite colors is in there as well and yeah that was how I decided on my brand colors and I just chose a few fonts that I liked and I stick to them at least in the beginning. <laughs> if you scroll down my Instagram to my first post yep it's still on my profile you're gonna see that the branding is quite different to what my branding looks like now. It's, well, how can I say this? A lot more. <laughs> now my branding is kind of a bit tuned down. It's a bit more neutral. Back then I was just like, yes, I want blue, I want yellow, I want red, I want gray, I want all the colors in there and I want a funky font and I want another font. So it was a lot. <laughs> but then again, it really helped me to stand out, I think, compared to the classic pink and white branding or this like rosé and beige branding that, sorry if I'm offending you if that's your branding, but I know that a lot of female businesses are using these colors and for me, they don't really stand out so much. So that's what I want to say here. It really helped me to stand out from my competition. And I think that also people, when they saw these brand colors and when they saw the font or the style that I was using, that they were like, oh yeah, it's Hannah's post, I'm gonna check it out. So it kind of helped me to get recognized and I still see this with other Instagram gurus or other Instagram experts as well. If they have very distinct branding and I see their post on my explore page, I instantly know who it is from and that really helps you with brand awareness and with getting more engagement in the end as well. A note on branding here. It's not important that you have the right brand colors, it's just important that you choose a brand color or a brand color set and that you stick with it. I see a lot of people, especially when they are starting out, they are just overthinking and they're like, yeah, but what if this shade of pink is not as good as the other one? Or maybe after a few months I want to change it. So what should I do? And then they just get stuck and they don't do anything. So it's better to take action now and to then optimize as you go instead of just being stuck and not doing anything because that's not gonna get you any closer to your goals at all. So just decide on a few brand colors, a few fonts, a few kind of items you want to use in your graphics and go with it. You can still change them afterwards. Believe me, there is no branding police or at least so far I haven't met any branding police 
police officer who is gonna come and arrest you for changing your branding. Obviously, I'm also say not saying you should change your branding every four months or so. <laughs> not at all, but it's just better to take action than no action. That is my takeaway here. Another thing that I have talked about with Alex in last week's episode, if you haven't heard it, do check it out. We talked about mental health and social media and how to get a better balance of the two. Alex has such great tips. She just came back from a social media break herself and her business is flourishing and she feels so much better. So if you want to hear her tips on how to establish that relationship with social media, then definitely check that out. But what I was going to say is that she said that you shouldn't put too much pressure on Instagram alone. And I totally agree. You need to find other ways to attract leads and sales too. Because if you just rely on Instagram itself, and don't get me wrong, Instagram is a fantastic platform to get clients. I get most of my clients from Instagram. Instagram, but I'm also active on other platforms. I also reach out myself to clients. So that helps me to not take Instagram super seriously and to not freak out if my metrics are not what I would want them to one week, because I know that there are other ways for me to be seen. I'm giving workshops. If you're listening to this episode on the day it was published, then I am probably giving a workshop right as we speak. But you know what I mean? I'm I'm also putting myself out there. I'm, I go to networking events. I do workshops. I give presentations online. And there is not just one way to find me. I have this podcast. I have a website. I have a blog. So I'm not saying you have to do all of these things at the same time, but it's just something to think about. Try to be diverse, I guess, or don't put all of your eggs in one basket. I think that's also an English saying. It is one in German. But anyways, you know what I mean. Just don't focus on one thing alone. Try to have different ways where people can find you, different ways where people can learn about your services and reach out yourself if you need to, because that's going to help you to see Instagram as a tool and nothing else. And the last thing I want to talk to you about today is something that I did also I think in the first week that I had my Instagram profile and that was to create a lead magnet. Now creating a helpful lead magnet is going to help you to transfer the followers that you have gained on Instagram onto an email list. People always say you never know what's going to happen to your Instagram. Maybe someone is going to hack it overnight and you lose all of your followers. And to be honest, it can happen. I've heard of this before. I know some pretty famous Instagram people who have lost their account and had to start out again. So it's not that rare. <laughs> so really make sure that you have other ways where people can reach you as well. And the easiest thing to do that is to start an email list. Plus a lead magnet is also really great to give people a little sneak peek, a little taste of what it feels like to work with you and the kind of content that you provide or in the way that you work. If I download a lead magnet and I really like it then I know that probably the paid offer is going to be really great as well. So it's a really good way to give your audience a little taste of you and your way of working. If you want me to do a separate episode on how to create a lead magnet or maybe how email marketing could work for your business, let me know. Email marketing works really, really well with social media marketing, so I can definitely do an episode on that as well. Let me know, send me a message on Instagram or on Facebook or an email, <laughs> you know where to find me. Okay, those were the things that I would do if I had zero followers right now and if if I were to start out again on Instagram. I'm gonna give you a little recap so you don't forget what we talked about. The first thing is get clear on your ideal client. Then start building a community and engage yourself. You should also decide on a branding style, on a few brand colors, a few fonts and stick to them. Don't change it all the time and take action and move forward. Then you shouldn't put too much pressure on Instagram alone. Have other ways where people can find you, where you can reach people. And the last thing I mentioned was to create a lead magnet. So I hope you really enjoyed this episode. If you are just starting out, definitely make sure to also download all of my freebies that I have. There's a hashtag list template. I have a free Instagram guide as well, which comes with a checklist. I have a content calendar template. So if you're just starting out, those are really, really great tools to get you started with Instagram. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you again next week when it's again time to talk socials.